everyone and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I've got a very special guest in the house today. She is a British Ghanaian TV personality and actress and she's all the way, well it's not really that far, but all the way here in Nigeria so we can find out a little bit more about who she is and what she has been up to. She's the host of the popular talk show, The Entertainers from Ghana Show. I have here with me, Peace Hyde. Hi. Welcome to EL Now. Thank you, for you look beautiful and fabulous and so glamorous. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so thanks for thanks for coming on EL Now. Um, so we've been we've been hearing a little bit about you. You know, you're still relatively, I guess, young. On the on the entertainment, oh, on the entertainment I think you just said oh, no. young age. I'm like, like is she actually? Like, is she crazy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's true. laughs> I mean, you look like you could be tall, so you know, black don't crack, as they say. <laughs> um, I was gonna say like young on the entertainment kind of media scene, you've been making waves, you know, across the continent. We've been hearing, we hear your gist, we hear your gist from here in Nigeria. Um, so we just want to get to know a little bit more about you mm -hmm. and 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 your background. So tell us a little bit about growing up in your house. Um, well, I was born in the UK. Um, I've lived there for practically most of my life. Um, I studied psychology. Um, I got qualified as a teacher. I went on to study or to study to teach um, the sciences. My specialism is chemistry and biology. I did that for maybe six, seven years. Um, got to senior management level and decided that I've done enough. I want to go <laughs> and pursue my creative side. So I decided to um, relocate back home. Um, and it's about a year and a half ago now. Um, but yeah, I started going into the entertainment field, um, presenting, event hosting, um, a little bit of acting. And God just took care of the rest of really. it. <laughs> here now. Awesome. Um, so were you first generation British born in your family? Like were your parents, do they no, live there at all? Um, or are you the first? Yes, of your, okay. all my family are born and bred in Ghana. In Ghana, okay. My mom, my dad, born and bred in Ghana. Okay, so yes. okay. So was that kind of difficult for you growing up or for them raising you in England, kind mm. of with the, you know, Nigerian or African parents actually can be very I think funny sometimes. <laughs> I think it was actually a good experience because um, having a family that is so passionate and so heavy in our culture, it meant that you had the best of both worlds. Okay. Growing up in the UK, you know, you're in the UK once you leave the house. Once you get to my mom's door, Ghana starts here. Like right. everything, she'll buy a washing machine and say, Peach, you need to learn how to hand wash your clothes. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> she, she really um, raised us as if we were still in Ghana. And it, I didn't realize at the time, but it was a huge help because mm. moving back after spending over 20 years and that's all you know in the UK, you know, the tube and central okay. London. Yeah. Um, and then to come to Ghana and have a completely different way of life, I thought it, would, it was difficult, but I thought it would be a lot harder than it actually was. And it was purely because my mum laid in an amazing foundation. And it, so she made that whole adaptation process a lot easier to yeah. stomach. That's great. Yay, moms. Moms are awesome. I mean, there's such bigger things going on in life. You know, like what is the current dollar exchange rate or eyeliner, or cheap wigs. That's a veiled insult. You're making me out to be some bimbo who only cares about ephemeral things. But that's your words, not mine. Um, so I had seen an interview um, with you where you described yourself as like a nerd. Yeah. And I was like, what? In what world? Because, you know, think of nerd, like the geeky glasses and like, you know, the funny, like talking in a funny way and like mm. a typical, like stereotypical geek. But um, did you ever go through that like ugly duckling phase at all? Um, I think everyone has. <laughs> and on some days I feel I'm right there. Um, but I think I, what I learned anyway was that it's all about your mind. Mm. I mean, when I was younger, I was extremely overweight. And I didn't really mind until boys became important. Then everyone was like, oh, she's a fat cow. <laughs> and it's like, um... <laughs> so um, I went through that stage. I went through that stage where I felt crap. I went through that stage where I had a lot of low confidence. Um, and it was just basically a choice to say, look, I'm, I'm going to make the best of myself. Mm. Not for anyone else, but for me. 
Um, and it was very weird because for me, I'm still the same person. Yeah. Um, but I feel that through my journey of learning to um, accept and love the person that I've grown to be, um, it was misconstrued. And people are seeing it as like, hey, look at this girl. But really, <laughs> it's actually just someone who wasn't the most confident growing up. I love education. If it's not for education, I wouldn't be who I am. But in terms of how I perceive myself and how I carried myself, as most girls, we always have so many things hanging over our head. Whether it's we feel we're not good enough, we don't like our hair, we don't like our yeah. nose, we don't like our armpits, whatever it is. <laughs> There's always something. Yeah. And um, I think the hardest thing to do as a woman um, or taking that transition from a young woman to an adult is to just realize that it doesn't matter what anyone says on TV or what your friends say or even sometimes what yourself says or even your family to a degree for some people. Um, you've just got to learn to take that journey to find yourself, love yourself. And you know, even if people judge you or misunderstand that journey, still stick to it because that's how you find who you really are. I'm in my third year of uni. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's this guy. Fine boy. Not exactly, but he's very, very intelligent. So wait, he wasn't even cute. Do you want me to tell you the story? Coming up next on EO Now. Something I can't do without, I think, would be um, my faith. I, that, I can't live without that. Everything else is irrelevant. I'd even give up food, maybe. So what's your, what's your motto? What's your life philosophy? Um, I, I don't have a life philosophy, to be honest. Okay. Why? Because um, I constantly wake up with random ideas <laughs> and I can be like so for this idea then uh -huh. a couple of hours later I'm like, yeah, that was rubbish. <laughs> so for me, I wouldn't say I necessarily have a motto in life, but I have um, motivation points that keep me going. And for me, it's about finding your power in your purpose. Um, I think it's all about trusting God in that journey in your life. And as long as you're focused on finding your purpose and going in that journey and finding out what does God want me to do and doing it to the best of your ability, no shortcuts, work hard, and that speaks for itself and it lasts. If that is your um, principles that you operate in, then the rest will come. But I think that you can't really have a motto in life. I think you've just got to live it and your motto will speak for itself. Mm -hmm. And people kind of work out that, oh, this girl's a bit like, you know? <laughs> right. But um, I, I don't have a motto, but I'm hoping I create that motto for, through my journey. Okay. I'm finding out why I'm here and what okay. I'm doing. That's awesome. What are five things you can't live without? Um, one would be food. <laughs> Two would be food. Girl, after my own heart, I love it, yeah, I love I it. I love my food. So for the first two, I'd choose like food. Um, I think, Three would be a good Wi-Fi connection because I'm just always online. No, like seriously, you're like <laughs> so. Um, yes, a Wi-Fi connection. Um, no, you know, I've got to do my phone. <laughs> um, yes, um, it, my hair, my makeup, that type of thing, girly stuff, clothes. Um, but last but most certainly not least, something I can't do without, I think, would be um, my faith. I think I put it last because it's covers everything really mm. when it's all said and done um with my faith is what's taking me and i i am amazed at how far um god has brought me from where i was to where i am now and that i can't live without that everything else is irrelevant i'd even give up food maybe um but yeah my faith is the one thing i i really can't live without the rest the other four are like <laughs> i can work around those <laughs> okay awesome awesome so like what legacy or impact would you like to leave in the world? Um, I think that the legacy I would like to leave willing would be um, that if you work hard, um, if you trust if you trust the process, mm -hmm. um, your ability to achieve is limitless. And that's it. Um, I don't I don't necessarily want to be known for this sector or for this um, industry in particular, mm. not entertainment industry, but like maybe education or okay. thing. But I feel like um, just as long as you follow the process that you're going through in life, as long as you trust God with your journey yeah. and with your faith, what you can achieve is limitless. Um, I've been a teacher, I've been a child psychologist, I've been an actress and presenter, and 
these are all things that I've been able to achieve through trusting God and working really hard. Okay. And if that's what I can achieve at this stage in my life, I have no idea where I'm going or what I'm about to do. So by God's grace, um, I would like to feel that, you know, that it's about achieving your full potential, whatever mm -hmm. may, that may be, but using the right principles to get there. Yeah. Okay, so you've mentioned a couple of different things that you've been able to achieve so far. If there's something that you could do or something that you're excited about doing in the future, like, what would that be? Um, to be honest, I'm actually just really, really stoked about where I'm, what I'm doing right okay, now. Okay. <laughs> so I don't even want to breathe in case it changes. <laughs> um, I'm, I feel like I've, I haven't even started. Like mm. I'm not an accomplished actress. I'm not an accomplished presenter. Okay. And for me, I would love to grow in those industries. Um, and that would be a huge thing for me to grow and solidify my name as a seasoned presenter or a seasoned actress. I think that would be an amazing next step for me. Um, but long term, it's limitless. Whatever he's got for me, as long as it's positive, I'm, I'm good. You're yeah, like, I'm, I'm good. good. I'm you know? worth it. I'm worth it. Okay, peace. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much having for having me. Thanks I appreciate for stopping it. by. Yay. Okay, guys, that's all the time we have on the show today. I know. I'm sorry. I have to let you go. But go out there, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> peace.